Folks are mad as you know what over the state of the economy. And as we saw in the recent outrage over the AIG bonuses, millions of Americans are looking for somebody to blame. Our cover story is reported by Chief Political Correspondent Jeff Greenfield. We are a huge land, a continental nation, rich in resources, with a core belief that your talents and drive can take just about anyone anywhere. In America, at least, uh, uh, people don't resent the rich. They want to be rich. Indeed, in good times, we even celebrate excess and pay homage to the masters of the universe and all they have accumulated. But when times turn hard... Let the people be heard! The celebrations then turn to anger. Someone, quite frankly, has got to take these people to the woodshed. I mean, let's be honest. They just don't get it. AIG, it's become shorthand for arrogant, irresponsible greed. Indeed, there are times in our past when such anger has turned deadly. On September 16, 1920, a horse-drawn cart loaded with 100 pounds of dynamite exploded on Wall Street's busiest corner. 38 people were killed, more than 400 injured. Today's attacks on Wall Street, of course, come in the form of arguments, not bombs. But there is a powerful current of anger that runs from the halls of Congress right through Main Street. And it's raised once again an argument that's almost as old as the Republic. Is too much wealth and power concentrated at the top? Should the government try to address that balance? Or is that idea nothing but class warfare? Two centuries ago, Thomas Jefferson denounced bankers and speculators as the biggest danger to the Republic. President Andrew Jackson waged war against the Second Bank of the United States and the elite circle of financiers. Practices of the unscrupulous money changers stand indicted in the court of public opinion, rejected by the hearts and minds of men. And Franklin Roosevelt began his presidency by indicting the money changers who he said had caused the Great Depression. The rulers of the exchange of mankind's goods have failed through their own stubbornness and their own incompetence. There's a great deal of cultural as well as political resentment at the rich for having um, gotten away with murder in effect for too long. Um, one certainly saw that in the early 1930s. Princeton historian Sean Wilentz. You know, you can't look at a popular movie from the early 1930s and feel that palpable sense. We're coming to a new order of things that the rich with, you know, personified by a fat guy with sitting on money bags with a cigar clenched in his, in his mouth. What the American people need is an iron hand. Right, right, that's true. Right. You know, that th they are the enemy. I think there's no question that, uh, uh, that, that the government sings with an upper class accent. In our time, the populist cause is made by voices like Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown, who won his Senate seat in 2006 by focusing on corporate misbehavior and a skewed economic playing field. The government has too often sided with um, the people with great advantage against the least privileged. And in the last um, three decades, the 5% of at the top have, have done much, much better than the rest of society. Populists, like Senator Brown, a Democrat, argue from recent data that the top 1% of Americans have more than 22% of income, a number that hasn't been matched since 1929. Those who have done very well under this system, those who have made huge, huge, huge profits and not shared those profits with their workers, why should they not pay a higher tax rate? Well, when you look at it right now, when you have the top 1% uh, paying roughly 35% of all income taxes, uh, it's tough to make the case that uh, those at the top aren't paying their share of, of income taxes. Republican Congressman Jeff Flake from Arizona is a mirror opposite of Senator Brown. America may have a more unequal distribution of wealth than other nations, he says, but that misses the point. Look eastward to Europe. You have a so-called fair distribution of income there, but it's a lower income and it's a lower quality of life than we have here. And I, I think it would be tough to argue otherwise. But Flake is no apologist for the Wall Street players who put the global economy in danger. They knew full well that would not last. Uh, they knew full well at some point, at some hint of a, a bubble bursting in the real estate market, that they were going to be in trouble. But, uh, but they went ahead knowing that uh, they could get theirs and then go away, I guess. And, and so I think people were justifiably outraged and still are. I think class warfare is something that is often motivated by politicians. 
Kimberly Strassel is a member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board. It's not politically acceptable to tax the middle class as a whole, so you want to go out there and, and, and wring more money out of the top 1% or 5%, and to do that, you have to set up the argument that somehow it's unfair that they have the money that they have. So how does this argument play outside of Washington? We rely on uh, people playing by the rules and having trust. Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley was once a steelmaking center of America. The mills shut down years ago. But the valley has made a comeback with high-tech enterprises like Air Products, which successfully reinvented itself as a supplier to cutting-edge businesses. The company's holding its own, and these employees still have their jobs, but my 401k moves to a 201k, and I'm going to have to work longer, work harder, in order to achieve my goals for retirement. There's plenty of anger out there, but most of it, at least here, is not directed at the rich. I found a home and a payment that I could live with. I took responsibility. Kim Cheney is angry at people who bought homes they couldn't afford. But I feel that these people are not paying for their poor decisions, paying for their actions. It is infuriating. I've played by the rules. I did it right. It is infuriating that I have to pay for someone else's mistake. What is so interesting to me is that the average American aspires to be that millionaire. We aren't angry at the rich, says the Wall Street Journal's Kim Strassel, because we believe that we, or our children, can someday join their ranks. Now, is that a rational belief or is that a, is that a, is that a myth? I think in this country, it's far more rational than anywhere else in the world that you would have the opportunity to one day be that millionaire. I'm the last person to engage in class warfare. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship, right? I work with people who set up companies who want to make money. They want to build good things for society. But MIT so, professor Simon Johnson argues in the Atlantic Monthly that there is too much money and power at the top and that the rules have for far too long been tilted in favor of those in the powerful financial sector. The problem is, is not uh, the wealthy, wealthy people, it's the, the, the concentration of power around people who run these major banks. Johnson, former chief economist with the International Monetary Fund, argues that much as with other troubled economies, the financial elite in the United States drove us off the cliff. What I think now has happened is, is we let certain interests become too powerful, again, like we did at the beginning of modern industrialization, let's say over 100 years ago in the United States. And it's something that is, is not good, but it can be addressed. It's going to be economically painful and, and, and politically difficult, but it's not the end of the world. We can, we can absolutely handle it. However policies and programs may change in the days and years ahead, our history tells us that today's anger will not trigger drastic shifts in the balance between the opportunity for great wealth and the impulse to contain and control its excesses. Historian Sean Wilentz. It's not that the rich are rich. Everybody wants to be rich in America. Nothing wrong with it. But if you've gotten there by ill-gotten gains, and if you've gotten there by screwing over the American public and the American taxpayer, well, that's another matter. 